Hey, this is Kez Bracey for Tuts Plus. Welcome back to Up and Running with Foundation for Apps. In this lesson, you'll learn how to install Foundation for Apps. We'll start by installing the Foundation for Apps CLI, the command line interface, and we're going to use that to scaffold out a new project. We'll have a look at the structure of that project so you can understand what's going on inside the various folders. We will use the CLI to build that project into an app. And we will also use it to handle automatic compilation of your SAS files and to have it serve up a local host preview of what you're working on. And as an optional extra, we'll also be going through how you can integrate browser sync into your project. And this will enable live reload of your local host preview. And it will also let you look at what you're working on on other devices on your network. So that means you'll be able to have a look at the application on a tablet at the same time as you're looking at it on a phone and on your desktop computer. All right, let's get started. The Foundation for App CLI has a few prerequisites. So before we actually install the CLI, we'll just need to make sure that you have these four things already installed on your machine. You'll need Node, Git, Ruby, and SAS. If you already have these installed and you're sure that they're up to date, then you are all good to proceed to the next section. If you haven't got them installed or if you're not sure if your versions are up to date, then what you can do is go to the free written tutorial series that I mentioned earlier, which is all about command line for web design. There are two tutorials that I'd like you to take a look at there. The first will get you set up with Node and Git, and the second will get you set up with Ruby and SAS. To install Node and Git, go to the tutorial named Taming Third-Party Packages. I'll provide a link for that below. Then you want to scroll down to the section titled Install Node.js and NPM and follow that. And after that, scroll down to the section titled Install Git slash msysgit. Now make sure that you follow the instructions for your operating system. So follow the OSX specific instructions or the Windows specific instructions if you are on a PC. To install Ruby and SAS, go to the tutorial name Powering Up Front End Code and you'll also find a link for that below. Then scroll down until you find the section on SAS slash SCSS and then just a little bit further to the subsection on install Ruby SAS. And you want to follow the instructions there to make sure you've got Ruby itself installed and then also SAS onto your system. Now that you have your prerequisites installed, you're ready to install Foundation CLI itself. And we're going to do this with command lines. So open up a terminal or a command prompt anywhere on your machine. It doesn't need to be pointed at a specific folder because we're going to be doing this installation globally. And at the same time as we install Foundation CLI, we're also going to install Bower and Gulp, which are two extra modules that Foundation makes use of as it's operating. Now, to do all that, you're going to need to run the following command. So type out sudo if you're on OS X, and then npm install, need hyphen g to install globally, foundation hyphen cli bower gulp and then hit enter and you'll need to input your password and then all of these things will be pulled in and installed on your system you'll just need to wait a little while you'll see this little lo loading icon and you'll see a bunch of text come up on your console so just wait until all that's finished and then you'll be ready to move on you now have the foundation CLI installed, so you're ready to go ahead and scaffold out a new application. Now to do that, just make a folder to hold your project. Just call it task management app or something along those lines. And then you'll need to open up a terminal pointed at that folder. Then in your terminal, enter the command foundation hyphen apps. After that, we'll use the word new to create a new application. And then we'll enter the name that we want our application to have. In this case, we'll go with task manager and then hit enter. Now the foundation CLI is producing your new app for you. So it's created a folder to house that application. It's downloaded the latest version of the foundation for apps template and it's also going through installing a few dependencies for you. So just sit tight for a minute while it takes care of all of this. And when it's ready, you'll see a you're all set message and that will let you know that the installation has been successful and that you're ready to move on. Now we can initiate the first build of our preliminary app and we can also have a look at what we've got so far in a browser by spinning up a local host preview. 
Now you can do this by, in the same line that you're already in in your terminal, typing in cd space task manager, which is the name of your application. That's just going to switch us into the actual task manager folder that Foundation CLI just created for us. From here, type in foundation hyphen apps watch. And this is what's going to actually build all of the application files. And it's going to start up that local host server for us. Now, when you see it say successfully built at the bottom, that means the local host is ready for you to go and take a look at it. One of the lines that was just printed out in your terminal says server started and then it gives you the URL that you can see on your screen there. And that's the URL of your local host. So you can copy that URL and just plug it into any web browser. We'll drop that URL into Chrome. And here is what our app looks like so far. Okay, now that our app is installed and running, let's check out what Foundation CLI actually put in that task manager folder for us. Inside this folder structure, the area that is going to be most relevant to you is the client folder. And this is where all of the files you'll be working directly on are housed. The assets subfolder, that holds your JavaScript and that controls the overall application itself. And it also holds your SAS files or SESS files. You also have the templates folder, and this holds the individual HTML files, each one of them being a template or a view within your app. You'll also want to be aware of the Bower components folder, because this is where the Foundation Apps library itself is housed. And the reason you'll want to know about this is it holds the library of iconic icons, which you'll be using later, and it also holds the base SCSS or SAS for your application. So if you find yourself wondering what type of CSS is controlling various elements of the way your site looks, you might need to dig into the SCSS here and find the code responsible for all the styling throughout your site. This is typically not going to be necessary, but it's just good to know where those files are if you do need to go through them. Now the build folder is the location your application will be built into. So all of your SCSS files will be written into this CSS folder and all of your HTML templates files will be put into this templates folder. And later on, you'll learn how to take this build folder and package it up separately and test it separately as a standalone app. All right, now this next section is optional but recommended. We're going to integrate Browser Sync, and that will make sure that every time your application recompiles, so say you make a change to one of your SAS files, the local host preview is going to automatically refresh itself. So you don't have to manually refresh it. It's also going to allow you to look at your local host preview, not only on your desktop computer, but also on any tablet or phone or any other device that's also sharing the same internet connection. And all of those device previews will be simultaneously reloaded every time you make a change. First, we're going to stop the existing process that's running in our terminal. This is what's keeping our local host preview alive. We're going to stop that so that we can make our changes and then restart that local host in a little bit. Now, you can stop this process with Control C. Now we're going to install the Browser Sync NPM module into our project. And you'll notice that we don't use that hyphen G flag. We're not installing this module globally. We're just installing it locally. However, it does need some elevated access privileges in order to install nonetheless. So we'll start our command with sudo and then we'll type out npm install browser hyphen sync. And again, put in your password and then just wait for that module to download and install into your project. To get the project to use our newly installed Browser Sync module, we're going to need to make some edits to our Gulp file. Now, if you don't know what a Gulp file is or you've never worked with Gulp before, you can also learn about this in the free command line for web design series that I've mentioned a couple of times. And I'll put a link straight to where you can learn about that. So open up gulpfile.js from the root folder of your application inside your preferred code editor. First up, we're going to make Browser Sync available to our Gulp file by adding in these two lines of code in this position here. You will get code samples as part of this course, so feel free to copy and paste from those if you're not 100% sure what to type into this file. 
Now, scroll down until you find a snippet of code that has a comment directly above it reading, starts a test server, which you can view at HTTP localhost 8080. This code snippet is currently responsible for running our localhost, but we're going to use browser sync instead. So highlight that whole snippet and comment that out. Then immediately after it, add in this new snippet, which will instead use browser sync for our localhost server. Now, whenever we run our local host, it will be run through browser sync, but we still just need to wire it up so that whenever we make a change to the files inside our client folder, it will trigger that reload that we talked about. So scroll right down to the bottom of the gulp file, and we're going to add a reload trigger to each one of these lines that starts with gulp watch on this first one after sass, and make sure you put this outside of the single quote marks. We're going to enter a comma and reload. Now we'll do the same thing after uglify, comma and reload. And then also after copy. And then finally after copy templates. Now save your gulp file and your browser sync integration is done. Now we can go back to our terminal, hit the up arrow twice so we can have it just reprint our foundation apps watch command, run that command. And the watch process will start for the app just in the same way that it did when you saw it the first time, just a little bit earlier. The difference is you'll have these access URLs printed out in your terminal. Now, this address, localhost 3000, is your new address to look at for your localhost preview. It was 8080 before, but now that we're using browser sync, it's on 3000. We'll paste that URL into our browser to replace the 8080 address that we had before. And there, when we load our new 3000 address, you'll see nothing has changed. And that's exactly what we want. We're creating basically the same localhost preview, just with the extra features that Browser Sync brings into the picture. Now, this URL will automatically refresh itself anytime that you make a change to your application's files. And back in our terminal... As well as the localhost 3000 address that we just used, we also have this address that is using a specific IP address rather than just saying localhost. And you'll notice that this is labeled external. And that's because this address will work on any of the devices that are using the same internet connection as your main machine is. So if you have a tablet or a phone also in the same internet connection, then use this address to view your preview. And that way you'll be able to test all the responsiveness of your application as you're going along. You'll be able to test that the touch gestures are working and that everything is going as you need it to be across all the different devices. Plus, the automatic reload will work not just on your desktop computer, not just on the localhost 3000 address, but also on this external IP-based address. So all of your devices will be unified and they'll all be reloading at the same time. Your setup is now complete and your basic app is all installed and ready to be customized to what you want to make it. Now in the next lesson, you're going to learn about working with Foundation for Apps templates. You'll learn how to load in custom templates of your own. You'll learn how to set up navigation links that take you through the routing that we mentioned earlier. You'll learn how to import child content from one template into another template. And you'll also learn how to create and use partial templates. I'll see you in the next lesson.